So let's talk about the new inflation numbers. 2.9%, which is a lot better than 3% expected. Let's talk about the impact on your portfolio, on the stock market, how to set up for this, and basically what this whole thing means. Because at this point, everybody knows inflation numbers came out, 2.9%, better than expected. But what does it mean? Why is the market flat? Why nothing is moving in any direction? And what it means for the next six and 12 months for your portfolio. So let's back up here a little bit. So the 2.9% is better than expected. In fact, if you look at the monthly gain, 0.2% and you multiply it by 12 months, we're currently running at 2.4% annual rate. So that's a lot closer to that 2% mark the Fed is trying to hit. And even if you look at the annual rate right now, which is 2.9, again, it's significant improvement since March when we were at 3.5%. So we were stalling there for a while, if you remember, but we have been moving down significantly, just as Tom Lee predicted over the past few months. At this point, Tom Lee just keeps on being right. He hasn't been wrong for 18 months and yet another time he's proven right. So with these better than expected numbers and the first time we've seen a two headline on the CPI since March of 2021, right? What is the impact? What this whole thing means? It's nice and dandy that this happened and it's good, but why is the stock market flat? I mean, what's going on? What's going to move up in the next 12 months? What you should do with your portfolio? Now, the one thing you have to understand here is that the biggest impact of this is going to be in the same realm that the job market is going to be at. Basically, what this means is that you have to understand that the Fed basically has two levers. They have to operate the lever that can basically controls the job market and the other lever is the prices. So they have to have price stability and the job market also has to be okay. So they have to kind of balance these two. And this balancing act can be very, very tough because sometimes price stability requires to raise interest, which causes a lot of damage to jobs, as we've seen in the past few months. So the job numbers have been getting consistently worse and worse and worse over the last few months, rising all the way to 4.3% which is a lot worse than what the Fed expected them to be by this point. So with better than expected inflation numbers coming out, this actually gives the Fed a lot of leeway to start releasing the pressure and basically alleviating the pressure from the job market. Because inflation is getting better and better and better yet another time, and because the job market is getting much worse, a lot faster than the Fed anticipated, this data basically pushes the whole idea that the Fed will have to cut rates in September. If anybody had a doubt about a rate cut in September, this doubt at this point should not exist because it is a 100% rate cut. The big debate will be whether it's a 0.25 or 0.5. I don't think the Fed structurally can cut 0.5 on the first cut cycle. It's not within the DNA of Jerome Powell and his compadres. They're gonna be very gentle with it and they're gonna do 0.25 most likely. But the bigger question here isn't 0.25 or 0.5. That's not that important, although 0.5 is possible. But the bigger question is, which type of asset class is gonna benefit the most out of this? Because at this point, the markets have already priced in the September cut a long time ago. And that is why you're seeing the markets basically ignoring this and being completely nonchalant today, as if nothing happened. Because this whole September thing has been priced in for a long time. But the more important question is, if you look at the next six to 12 months, which stocks, which type of stocks will do better than others when the Fed is in active cutting mode, so to speak? Because we spoke about it in previous videos. The Fed cutting cycle is probably gonna take about a year. So for the next year, the Fed is gonna be cutting and cutting and cutting. And in that time frame, certain asset classes are gonna do better than others. And that asset class is the same asset class that has gotten consistently worse and worse and worse as interest rates have gotten higher and higher. The more we've seen interest rates spike and spike and spike over the past few years, the same asset classes that got hammered will do better as the pressure gets released by the Fed. Think about real estate. Real estate got absolutely annihilated by the Fed interest rates, right? Think about small caps, the Russell 2000, the IWM index, the small caps have absolutely been demolished. We have gone 700 days since the Russell 2000 has seen a new high. New highs on an index happen 10, 12, 13 times per year. Two years in which the IWM, the Russell 2000 Small Caps Index, have not seen a new high. It's been basically going as a kind of, think about it like a, 
this spring that's getting more and more tensed and you're about to release it and it's gonna go out of control. So the IWM is currently being uh, in a really good position for this setup. On top of it, real estate, any sort of REIT, you can think about real estate investment trust. These sort of asset classes will do much, much better. Now the reason small caps are better positions for this than any other asset class in the market, and I agree with Tom Lee about it, is the fact that if you look at the, the debt structure of these companies in the rest of the thousand, what you're gonna find is that they're mostly in floating rates, which means that about half of their debt is subject to interest rate changes by the Fed. And as the Fed actually increases rates, they suffer. But as the Fed decreases, they gain. On the S&P 500, it's only 10% floating rate and 90% fixed. On top of it, they're double the leverage than the S&P 500 companies. And this whole setup is gonna basically serve as a big catalyst for these small caps. Uh, now, what I think Tom Lee is doing right now is doing cartwheels in his backyard because he's been right for 18 months and now he's right again. But I want you to pay attention to what Tom Lee said and I agree with him. Tom Lee has said this multiple times. The biggest chunk of this rally isn't gonna come in August or September. It's gonna come in October and more likely in November, December. So there's no point in loading up the boat right now and buying like crazy because you're gonna have a lot of time, probably another month, month and a half to buy at these dips and the prices may keep going down. You don't have to rush into this. You can slowly DCA. Now, what I think it's important to understand here is that the idea of a really strong August, it exists for sure. But statistically speaking, I've showed you this in previous videos, in the year like 2024, when the first half was so strong, where we've done 11%, the average return in August is the lowest out of the entire remaining months of the year. It's negative 0.6%. While September, October, November, December are all positive and they get better and better as we go forward with 11 and 12 being the best months. Now, it's important to understand this because number one, there may be more scares, there may be more dips, the markets might go even crazier, we might have another shake off, a lot of people will be scared, they're gonna be selling. So it's important to understand this is not the end of the pain. We might see more dips, we might see more crashes, and this isn't some sort of celebratory video where it's all over. So if it happens, you have to remember, look, we're waiting for October, November, December. The August and September timeframe is accumulation time for us. And if prices drop, if we have more and more negativity, it's an opportunity for us to increase our holdings and decrease our cost basis by accumulating at cheaper prices before the market swoops up and all the sheep start buying at top. Right, that's the whole idea here. Make sure you understand whether you are a trader or an investor because you don't want to be a trader acting like an investor, but you definitely don't be an investor acting like a trader. Understand that you're playing the long-term game if you're an investor. Understand that August and September might be weaker than the rest of the year. And understand that this, basically what happened today, is just another proof that Tom Lee might be right, but there's no guarantees. And all you can do is accumulate DCA, dollar cost average, and add to the stocks you like slowly but surely, and don't go trying to time the market. I'll see you in the next one.